buckle up, because it's gonna be a long ride. It's gonna be a wild ride. Nobody cares, but we're gonna tell you anyways. This is Popcorn Chats. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Popcorn Chats. I'm McKay. But I'm Katie. And we are back with our continuing rewatch coverage of Pretty Little Liars. We are on to season four. Uh, if you are not familiar or have not listened to our past episodes, we are covering them in half chunks. So we are covering season 4A, episodes 1 through 13. Spoilers ahead for not only this season, but the show as a whole, because yeah, we've seen it before. So we talk about things past, present, and future on this recap. And yeah, we're back into it, bitch. We're back because we could not stay away. And I yeah. already am like, I want to continue. <laughs> I know. I, it's become like, when, my comfort show. It's like the only thing that's really been, nothing's wowing me lately. Mm. Like, I just, I'm, I'm waiting for something to like really do it for me. The only thing I've watched recently that's like really done it for me is Thelma and Louise. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and then Pretty Little Liars. So people, yeah. Hollywood, get it together. You're in your flop This era. show, it's a standout. I just feel like everything's kind of in a flop. You know what I was thinking back to when I was looking at my movie collection? I was like, I don't know the last time that I bought a movie because I don't know when the last time I loved a movie so much was that I wanted to go out and buy it. Yeah, Here's my flop. thing. <laughs> I think the majority of the population, like not saying they don't have standards, but I just feel like my tastes are just different, I think, because I don't know, you're probably not, but The Last of Us, the HBO show. I've been watching that every week. But like, it's nothing special. People are raving about that show. The New York Times called it the best episode of television like in the past two de decades. I was like, I can name five Pretty Little Liars episodes that are better. Go Pretty Little Liars, but... You know what I mean though? It's just like, I don't see what everybody else is seeing. I just don't feel like I've been like drawn in by something TV show since House of the Dragon. I'm waiting Same. for some... I mean, and obviously rewatching like Pretty Little Liars here, but just mm -hmm. nothing is like blowing me away. Shall we begin? Yeah. Okay. How was Disney? Do you want to share with the viewers? Oh, yeah. It was listeners? good. Yes. I went to Disney with some of my booktube friends and it was so much fun. It was awesome. One of them I hadn't seen in person yet. So it was awesome meeting her in person. And it was a fun but busy weekend because it was like obviously go, go, go the whole time. And then we went to Universal one of the days, which I had never been there before. So that was cool. Um, I did, in fact, have a panic attack on one of the rides. So that Which was one? uncool. It was very stupid. It was one of the Harry Potter ones. It was a multitude of factors that went into this panic attack. But I thought we were in line for the Hagrid's roller coaster ride. We were, in fact, not. We were in ride for the one that, like, has the 3D screen. And I get really sick on those rides. And I had already been sick from the Spider-Man one. Like, that morning, I had been nauseous after that one. So I was kind of like, no more rides like that, whatever. And I hadn't taken my medicine the day before because we were at Epcot and I wanted to like drink freely all day. So then like I was kind of like behind on my meds and then I kept seeing signs in line for this ride. Like I didn't see what the ride was because once again, I was just thinking it's this roller coaster, but I kept on seeing everywhere, every which way you turn. It was like, do not ride with motion sickness. Do not ride with motion sickness. And it was like a little cut out person like vomiting. If y'all don't know me, I have a big fear of throwing up. Like I will not let myself do it. I was getting really nervous and then like literally in the room prior to getting on the ride then I saw this one screen of like what the ride looks like and I was like we're not in line for that one right? And one of the girls just kind of turned and looked at me with like a deer con because no one knew that we were in line like we just clearly got in the wrong line and then I was like oh shit and then I was like going to tell the employee like I don't want to go on it anymore but it wasn't like you know how when you get in line for a roller coaster and then you like stand there and you like wait for it to open no literally this one was like a continuous loading one so when you walked into the room they like put you on the ride right away. So I felt like I didn't, I mean, I could have, I just felt like I couldn't speak up and say like, oh my God, I don't want to do this anymore. And then I got on the ride and I was like, I could feel myself starting to panic. And I was like, you can't do it. Like you're on this ride. You just have to like get through this ride. And then like, once you get off, th then you can go and freak out. So I made it through the ride. And then as soon as it stopped, I started crying. 
having a panic attack and it was just embarrassing but one was of it my the friends, castle ride uh i don't it was the one where you're like strapped in. i katie like i barely opened my eyes i opened my eyes at one point and it, there was like a giant spider in front of me and i was like big mistake <laughs> um i don't know there were like screens and then you would like go through like the spider forest and then you were like back in front of a screen and then there were like death eaters and then you were like yeah. back in front of a screen are you that's the one that i really like that you are you was the line like through the castle though and it like yes. snows on you yeah that was the yes. one that i was telling you to go on didn't know that you get tripped out with those rides i'm so sorry um, Trash. Um, i'm glad you got to go through the line the line is the best part the line's of that cool. fucking ride love it's that. super cool loved yeah. it it was really fun like in the queue it was good and everything it was just yeah. when i realized that you um, should just be able to friends. go through the line yeah <laughs> yeah i should have just not got on it but i did and whatever one of my friends was really really good to me and she helped me out so that was nice and good. then i did end the evening with a spiked butter beer so i mean a okay, win yeah. <laughs> yeah how was your weekend is corinne still there or is she back home no she's not here she's in kentucky now with her parents oh, that's um right. she'll be back out here well she'll be in san diego this sunday through like thursday or something um so i'll see her then my shit has been so crazy and i i'm obviously gonna cut this out but i had no words and i still have no words <laughs> i'm just absolutely <laughs> flabbergasted millennials need to be stopped that's all i have left to say get fucking real that's insane i would never i can't fathom saying that to someone dude that's so shitty i'm so sorry my life is fucking tragic and i just did my private check-in with michaela some things you guys don't (laughs) need to know so (laughs) we need our own private girly time sometimes we do let's get into this motherfucker yeah bitch uh should i start with our tracking that we've been that I've been keeping track of stuff for. Yeah, I know I'm gonna regret reminding you of this, but the time. <gasps> the <recap>. time. <gasps> okay, yep. Yeah, because you're up. Let me actually do that first. Let me pull up my timer. Okay. What is wrong On with your... me? I don't do anything self-serving. <gasps> On your marks. <laughs> get set. Go. Okay. Toby's crying because his mom. Didn't kill herself, apparently. Um, Mona was A, and she's out of Radley, and she is working with the girlies to find out who Red Code is. The girlies are all trying to figure out what they're doing next year for college while trying to do things like Hannah's trying to keep her mom out of prison because Wilden is no longer with us. Ezra and Arya are no longer together. Arya decides to enlist in self-defense classes because she's small and gets pushed around a lot. Emily is really not doing well with swimming. Um, A just really doesn't want her to be a swimmer. Um, Spencer is with Toby. She's taken away from the girlies and helping him solve this mystery of his dead mother, which doesn't matter. Period. That's it. (laughs) Oh no, I hit repeat. Cancel. Good job. Thanks. (laughs) I feel like you got some good highlights in that. Yep. Didn't really Uh, touch on any of the big stuff, but that's okay. Okay, so we've been tracking some things over the course of the show. So first up that we've been tracking is our A suspects or A confirmed people. In season four, now it's more been who's ready coat and kind of our two main people that we're suspect on are Melissa and Cece for the majority of the season but then right at the very end of the season we get Ezra right we don't know how he fits into it but he's suspicious at least as of right now we don't know how he fits into it relationship slash slash kiss tracker Aria added Jake to her roster but otherwise everyone else No one else added anyone new this season, so. Or Emily is still in the lead with six. Wait, Um, didn't Arya kiss that Connor kid, too? He kissed her. Oh, yeah, Connor. Okay, yep, let's add him. Good call. So, actually, her and Emily are tied. Okay, Arya, shit. Favorite A communication method. Katie, did you have a favorite A communication method this season? I did. I feel like I always go first, though. Okay, I can go first. It was the CD in Toby's truck. Oh, damn. That was fun. 
fucked up. Like, that, that was legitimately, was. like, one of the worst. Like, that's just so... I mean, like, obviously A is a mean person, but that is just so extra mean to do to Toby. But I do have to say that was pretty creative. So, yeah, I, I'm always looking for the creativity, something outside of the box, and I did like that. Yeah, I liked that A gave their American Girl dolls to these little kids in the park. That shit was funny and crazy. Yeah. And I love how they're just all looking at the little kids like... <sighs> I'm like, you guys could just Wild. go about your day. Or why not be like, who gave you guys these? Oh, but then they were like, your they friend did, Allison. Yeah. Whip out the phone and start scrolling through pictures and being like, which one of these? You know how Hannah did that to figure yep. out who took what's his face to the fair? Yeah. Because they would have shown them a picture of Cece and they would have been on to shit earlier. Idiots. Funeral tracker. We added our third funeral of the show with Wilden. Once again, the ladies are serving looks at yes. it. The only death so far we have this season is Wilden. And then just as kind of like an opposite to that, we have like someone undead, which is Allie. We are confirmed by the end of the 13th episode that Allison is alive. She might be a little unwell, but she is in fact alive. That was kind Kind of our usual trackings. We'll get into new characters after we do like standout star, standout scene. Who is your standout Ooh. star this season? My standout star? I'm switching it up a little bit. It was Hannah. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed Hannah a lot. She's my second favorite of the girls. Uh, I feel like this was really her moment to shine. I loved a lot of her moments that she had with Caleb, with the girls, with her mom. I felt like she was much more of like a central focus this season so far. And I, once again, just uh, love love her like little zingers here and there specifically when they were all talking in the living room when the girls were trying to confront Spencer about like keeping stuff from them and like how they're like we've all had boyfriends and I'm and Hannah goes yeah even Emily (laughs) she says shit like that that just like genuinely makes me chuckle she has like the emotional moments this season but she also has the like funny moments that we know and love her for yeah she doesn't lose that that she's also my standout star spoiler alert she doesn't lose that like current that she always has even though she's going through arguably like one of the toughest times that she goes through on the show she still has those funny zingers and one-liners and she still has this incredible relationship with Caleb she truly is the underrated icon of the group like the underrated clutch gene of the group I enjoy her on screen the most this season but when Spencer is like distracted with Toby's mommy issues this season this half of the season Hannah gets floppy number one and two off their fucking asses and like bitches just because spencer is mia doesn't mean we get to like go back to being regular teenagers get off your fucking butts my mom is going to prison but i still feel like even if hannah's stakes weren't as high she'd still be like you guys let's go she's she's the kim kardashian like get your fucking ass up and work Mm -hmm. it seems like nobody wants to work these days that's how it is with aria and emily yeah they don't want to work these days without hannah and spencer they're not getting shit done (laughs) yeah Absolutely. So how hard she goes for her mom this season. I love it. And her with trying to figure out the magic trick with the saw. Yeah. Love it. Love the effort. See, at least she tries. (laughs) Yeah. Standout scene. I feel like mine's kind of basic, but it's at the end of the 13th episode when we finally see Allie and like that she turns around when they chase her. Spencer's backyard after they're all driven home from Ravenswood and it's finally confirmed that Allie is in fact alive. That is just like a huge turning point for the show is that knowledge because obviously we've known since season one that she's dead or like like we've thought since season one that she's dead, but like the girls have seen her or like claimed they've seen her, but we've never known if it's been like hallucinations, dreams, what have you. And this is now like the hardcore proof that like they have actually been seeing her this whole time. And it really obviously affects where the show goes from here. My standout scene was just like a funny moment when Arya is trying to explain to Spencer that she kissed Jake, but Spencer's distracted. And so it's like a really funny scene of dialogue. And then Hannah coming in with the bird and they're like, you still stole her bird and she's like I didn't steal it she gave it to me <laughs> but just Hannah and the bird Pippi. is so fucking funny to me <laughs> 
What was his name? Pippy or Tippy? Tippy? Tippy, yeah. Tippy. Tippy. Whatever happened to Tippy? Probably dead. R.I.P. to a legend. I should add him <laughs> to the death list. <laughs> yeah, he gave some mad clues. He gave us he major did. info. <laughs> he did. He was more helpful than Emily or Aria this entire season. Literally. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Tippy the bird. Oh, um, hail Tippy the bird. Nancy Drew's sidekick. All right, some new characters that we got introduced to that we don't cover every single new character that comes in and out of the show, mostly just people that are going to have an impact on the show moving forward or play like a big role in the show. So we have Officer Holbrook coming in, a new cop now that Wilden is gone. And we also have Lieutenant Tanner. She's going to stick around for a lot longer than Holbrook is, but they're both the new cops in town now that Wilden and Garrett are both goodbye. I don't fuck with any of these corrupt ass motherfuckers. See, but I don't think Lieutenant Tanner, I will get into it as the show goes on. She turns out, I feel like, to be the only real one, and I'm like, the fact that she's the only female cop that we get on this entire show just shows. Well, I just can't remember. I can't remember what she ends up doing so maybe i'm okay. speaking too soon but right now i don't like her <laughs> that's a, that fair enough fair enough jake another older guy dating a an underage high schooler uh miss grunwald and i'm including ravenswood as a whole as a character because it really okay. does play a big part in this season mm-hmm. and kind of will more so play a part in caleb and hannah's story going forward and i didn't include travis on this list because he's literally only going to be important because caleb's gone and then as soon as caleb back Travis just disappears so I guess yeah. kind of but also like he's really unimportant oh like in the grand scheme of the show he's very very minuscule right yeah so. I was like do they do do they date I couldn't remember they do right they like kiss a little yeah okay and fuck. he comes back and I don't remember where Travis goes but can I just say that I there's a lot of things about Ravenswood that I'm just not about first of all the sepia filter get the fuck I was gonna ask Ask you about that. <laughs> Fucking can't <laughs> deal with that. It works for Twilight, not for this. See, I, like I actually kind of love it. No, I, was I kind of obsessed with hate it. It gives me a fucking headache. It's too oh. intense. If it were more subtle, I'd be down, but it's not. I feel like ABC Family kind of invented the whole like you have to be watching this show in order to watch this show. Mm-hmm. At the time, it was cool. Like, I remember this season finale and season premiere event of, like, Ravenswood and the crossover and all of that. And I remember being, like, hype as fuck for that. Looking back on it now, I'm like, this is such a waste of fucking time and Mm -hmm. so much fluff. Like, when it's Caleb and Miranda, who literally look like siblings. They do. With their haircuts. Mm -hmm. I'm like... (laughs) This makes no sense. If Mm -hmm. anything, Caleb should have seen his grave first Mm -hmm. and then it would have made sense for Hannah to be like, you should stay here and like figure out what that's all about. But then she's like, no, go be with this random ass bitch. Like, no, it's all so stupid and I hate it. And it's a cash grab. And it was a flop. (laughs) And it was a flop. Tyler Blackburn deserved better. He did. I have a question. We talked a little bit about Wilden's funeral. Who do Mm -hmm. you think was serving the most at that? funeral oh wait let me pull up there look i remember i hate hannah's dress i want to say was it that i liked emily's dress the best yeah no hannah's dress is not serving okay i'd say probably (laughs) emily (laughs) emily or spencer i actually like aria's dress but i just think spencer's outfits just so fit her character that even if they're not my personal taste i think they just look so good on her and i think they just really realized like what troy and belisario looks really good and then like what silhouettes and necklines and stuff so she's a sleigh but also i kind of like emily's look i like the deeper v and the her hair yeah so i kind of like that hannah chose to go the sluttier route for this funeral because it's kind of like a fuck you to Wilden with like the mesh top but yeah I have to agree I think Spencer is my favorite and Emily is gonna be my least favorite just because of like the print Mm -hmm. on her dress I didn't think that was like yeah super flattering but that was just the time the time period I probably would have worn that to a funeral (laughs) during that time period so (laughs) but can you imagine how many funeral attire outfits they need in their closet before you graduated you're already going to three 
Damn, bro. Yeah. And you know what? When Paige was like, I've been to weddings with vows less, you know, intense is the one recommendation letter. I'm like, how many weddings have you been to, Paige? You're only a senior in high school. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Fuck Paige. Oh my God. With her, her little like Sims model of the fucking dorm room situation. I'm like, that's the gayest <sighs> shit I've ever seen because bitches do, be so would be doing that. For real. You don't have room for a couch in your college dorm. You know, I would have been doing that shit though. If if I were out before college, I would have been like, I'm going to room with my girlfriend. Also, Missed you know, Paige, why didn't she put their beds together in the first place? Yeah. You don't want to be sleeping next to your girlfriend? Yeah, we're definitely not going to be, uh, like, have bunk beds. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, lofting our shit or anything like that. I hope you have your flop list because there were some flops that I noticed and I was like, I hope Katie includes them. So my flops of this half of season four, top of the list, of course, Paige with the Stanford dorm room situation. I think it's just too much. Um, Although I probably would do that. It's a very lesbian thing to do, but it's, I don't fuck with it. Spencer not getting into UPenn. That's a flop. Kind of embarrassing for her. (laughs) Jake is a flop. He's just not it for Arya. Like, he's just flopping. Like, and we get to see that. And, like, that's how he's set up. Like, he's a decent enough guy. He's just not, like, he's falling asleep during movies that she likes. He's not, like, doing the stuff that she wants to do. He's a very, like, dude bro. He's fine. He's just giving, like, graham cracker vibes. Not really much flavor. Um, So he's a flop. He made the list. Um, And also, once again, we have him trying to date underage girl. We haven't right. we don't know how old he is, but he's definitely not in high school. And if he's like the owner of this business, guarantee he's not like 19, 20. Like right. he's probably like early twenties. So just yeah. once again, if y'all want to get mad at all these people dating younger ages, got it throw Jake in there too then. you right. And when he confronts Ezra, it's like, sit down. You're also not great. Okay, moving on. I feel like the fact that the girlies don't get suspicious about Mrs. De Laurentiis early on, they have all the clues. They have all of these like red flags about this lady and none of them are tipped off, not even Spencer. That's a flop to me. She's literally, Mrs. D is like, oh yeah, she lied to me about this party and she ran off with this guy and she's not even suspicious about that guy and they still haven't found the like I would be like why is she not suspicious about that they're just asking all the wrong questions their interactions with Mrs. D is a total fucking flop I feel like this is gonna be a controversial thing but Moby Toby and his mommy issues is on my flop list (laughs) I, I understand that this is like an important personal issue but lives are currently at stake this is an issue about a life that has already come and gone Rest in peace, obviously. Your trauma is valid and you should probably see a therapist about it and you deserve to know the cause of your mother's death. But babe, your girlfriend and her friends are being tormented by this unknown person and we need to figure it out. And just how he's trusting A, it's a flop to me. Yeah, that's my thing. Like, I don't mind seeing him cry or anything like that. What my problem is, I'm like, how do you even know that this is the truth or that they're not just using you for like their own gain, you know? No, that's what I don't trust. Yeah. You know, when Spencer's like, you don't know what you're doing, like what you're messing with. Like she knows. Yeah. She's been dealing with this for a long time. So maybe you should listen to her. I don't know. Right. Emily headbutting the wall during her swim meet was <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> it was a hard, it was a goddamn hard hit. It immediately starts gushing blood. Like, but don't. And she's just floating there. If I knocked myself unconscious in a pool and I'm supposed to be the star captain of this swim team, I would quite <laughs> just kill myself. Also, with the Fields family, Pam has moved into her abusive era. <laughs> She has transitioned away from her homophobic era to now child abuser. Um, And she's getting family services called on her ass. While that is hilarious, she's still flopping. (laughs) Um, She's really flopping. Her not even picking her husband coming up from war, up from the airport. She's making this man take a taxi home. What were you doing? Because pick him up? He, Wayne, is out here defending our fucking country, bitch. And you are yanking your guys' daughter around school property. So he has to come home? I would be livid. There's a car in the living room? Yeah. Bitch, (laughs) the 
<laughs> and then too, when Emily's like, I need to go be with Hannah. And after Pam gets CPS called on her, she's like, hmm, maybe you should stay away from them for a little bit. Because Miss Marin's in prison. Bitch, you could be right in there beside her. <laughs> like, you Miss Marin is being framed. You yeah. are yanking your kid around the school. <laughs> Botched. Get with it. I don't think this is necessarily a flop. I just want to call attention to it. Rosewood and the surrounding areas have some of the most obscure shops and businesses. <laughs> and I just wonder if they would have survived the pandemic. Probably not. No. Do you think the face sculptor guy would have survived the pandemic? Where is he now? No, although you know what? He probably has like three years of a stockpile of beans in his basement that he's probably <laughs> doing just fine. His rent's probably cheap out yeah. in the middle of nowhere. But I'm definitely calling it that the doll shop lady and her creepy kid didn't make it through the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Especially not when A gets discovered. Who's buying creepy dolls anymore? <laughs> yeah. A's single. You know what? A is a small business supporter because <laughs> they are supporting the face mask business the, the costume business, shop the co- yeah the private airport in rosewood pennsylvania <laughs> oh so you know what a may have their faults but they're about small businesses you don't yeah. see them amazon priming things no so yeah good for you a ella and the bees <laughs> made my flop <laughs> And we never got a face reveal of what she looked like when she was all puffy. There's a simple solution to that. Get out of the car. (laughs) Open the door. Another flop is the grown-ass college tour man that wants Um, Emily, who is not only a high schooler, but a lesbian. Also him, when they're at a party and he's like, do you want a drink? Actively serving alcohol to minors. It's like, bro. He's like, I'm a cool tour guide now. It's like, what (sighs) type of college tour is this? Although Mm -hmm. I do remember one of my college tours, they took me to a party. It wasn't a tour. Really? It was like, like a visit that was when I was thinking about playing the cross in college and I like spent the night with some of the players and they took me to a party. So I don't think a a tour guide would do that. Like that's pretty intense. I think just Ezra period is a flop with the whole Malcolm (laughs) situation. That's embarrassing. (laughs) (laughs) Another flop when Emily gets taken while they're watching Arya on the stage. A takes Emily. (laughs) Fucking classic, bro. Classic (laughs) weak link ass shit. Mm -hmm. She's right back to it. Oh my god. You're not even gonna yelp. You're not gonna say anything. No. No. You don't remember who took you. You didn't fight. Like, what? What's that? (laughs) You didn't feel getting yourself into a box because even if they like chloroformed (laughs) you, you would have like a couple of seconds before you're knocked out to like I don't know scream yeah even if a cloth is over your face your friends are right next to you they're all holding hands but then like Hannah disappears and it's the statue I'm pretty sure it was Emily that like dropped her hand and then grabbed onto a statue instead (laughs) get your fucking shit together it's like the lights go off and Emily's brain just stops working yeah Lights off, no one home. No one is fucking oh. home. When they were like, somebody better know how to change a tire. I was like, Spencer's got it for sure. Mm-hmm. And then Emily's like, are you looking at me because I'm gay? Bitch, no one's looking at you. <laughs> Trust me. No one thinks you can change a tire. You are no. grasping at straws, bitch. No one's looking at you to do anything <laughs> at all. Just because you're a all. lesbian, we don't expect you to know how to do things like that. No, I'm a lesbian you're actually... and I would not know how to change a tire if my life yeah. depended on it. So. You're actually quite incompetent. So, <laughs> Emily, no one's turning to look at you. <laughs> most often, the lesbian is the most incompetent in the group. I feel like I'm the most incompetent in our group of four. Mm, I'd probably agree. <laughs> It's hard to do things. My dad had to help me with my taxes today. I'm going to have my dad help me with mine. I don't like doing it myself. I actually feel like I did a pretty good job. It stresses me out. Yeah, it is stressful. I feel like I'm going to get in trouble. I do have one that you missed. Okay. Um, Principal Hackett. <laughs> Floppage. Not you asking a student's sister if he's taking his medication. He's wildin'. Yeah, he's always gosh. been wildin'. The fact that you just let a teacher that you know 
had a relationship with the student back into the school. Class action lawsuit. <laughs> yeah. How desperate are you? I guess the teacher, there is a teacher shortage. So first off, I do just want to start with, uh, was Hannah wearing a wig in the first episode? Did you notice <gasps> that? Her that... hair is so weird in it. I was wondering that, Michaela, because I was, when I was watching it, I was like, is that a wig? Um, yeah. It looked like one. So I don't know. Maybe Ashley had like dyed her hair for something or. Or I didn't know. I'm like, did they have to go back and like reshoot things? And that she had already like switched her hair for yeah. like the. Ne- I don't know. But it was really, really bizarre. I never understood this when I was younger. And that whole dead pig situation, pig in the back of the car, and how much of a flop that reveal was at the end of season three. I kind of appreciate now, like, when Emily says all of this for a dead pig, and then the the (laughs) flap flies up and it's willed and dead. That's fucking funny, bitch. And that's good. That's a good ass payoff. I know everybody was mad as fuck. I do do still think they fucked up. Like, the big reveal was that it was just a dead pig, but it's kind of funny. It is funny. (laughs) I remember Twitter after that reveal and people just being so pissed because they were like what is this and it's something that now in hindsight as we're older it's like "Mm -hmm. okay Marlene okay Marlene we see you Spencer and Ezra spend a little bit of time together this season um, with her college essays and I don't appreciate him like telling her to dial it back when it comes to being personal but I do think them having scenes together especially early on in this season it's working their scenes together are really good and I think it kind of maintains Ezra's presence. Like he's kind of, since him and Arya aren't dating this season, there needs to be like something that keeps us interested in him or like, why are we watching him? And then the yeah. fact that he's like the big A reveal um, in the middle of this season is like, uh, it's important then that he has scenes and they were like smart to give him scenes with the best actress on the yep. show. Yeah, I did like that. Cause he's a pretty small presence in this season. Cause without Arya, he doesn't have kind of like, any of the guys really if they're broken up they don't really have much of a presence or like reason to be on the show a lot because it really is about these five girls so Mm -hmm. that was a good way to incorporate him and too I think just seeing him interact with other characters kind of because you see like them and Caleb interacting together like the girls and Toby interacting so it is just kind of nice to see them like him interacting because otherwise it's pretty much always him and Arya having to interact at his apartment or something you know Mm -hmm. because obviously they're not supposed to be together that it's kind of nice just seeing the friend group also get to chat with him for different Mm -hmm. things too. I was getting annoyed with him like when all this stuff with Hannah and her mom is going on and then we're cutting to Ezra being distraught about the kid that isn't his. I'm like oh my god bro I don't give a fuck like he walked into that shit. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. So I did like that he when Hannah was that he like pulled her aside and was like, Don't worry about your assignments. Mm-hmm. You know you got a lot going on. Like that's He's why a real I just that. He is. And I don't know. I really don't we'll get into it. We'll talk about it at the end. I have a lot of thoughts on like the whole Ezra's A thing. Cause I just I don't like this. I think yeah. it's so stupid. Cause at the time, like now they're setting it up to make you think that Allie is afraid of Ezra because mm-hmm. he's A. Whereas he's just being creepy as fuck and like, you know, yeah. stalking them. Um, For like literally no reason. Another thing that I love is Toby and Caleb working together and their vibe yes. this season and their friendship that's kind of blossoming and how their relationship is like really being shown. Yes. I love seeing the boys work together. Mm-hmm. Like it reminds me then in what is it, season six? when they're kidnapped together and then seeing like the guys all work together to try to find them. Mm -hmm. I love the bromance that we're starting to get between them and like teaming up. Um, What do you think about Mona confessing to Wilden's murder? I kind of love that. Same. Um, I like Mona a lot. She's one of, I don't know. She's one of my like favorite characters on the show, actually, I think, because she goes through so many, like you'd never really know what to think about her. And I like, first of all, when she's helping Hannah out with the confession and then her going in and doing it herself. And we don't really know what kind of motive she has for it. But like, I do think that she had good intentions doing it and trying to like help Hannah out. And like, she does love Hannah, even if she's, you know, punished her in the past. And I mean, it worked. She knew that Hannah couldn't pull it off. So it was either let Hannah fail at 
at it or her succeed at it. I like it. It makes it interesting. Yeah, I like it too. And I like just Mona's overall involvement with them at the beginning of the season. Like, it doesn't feel like someone's invading the group necessarily. Or it's like, a honestly, I feel like when Allie joins the group, it's more jarring than when Mona is a part of it. Because Mona, at this point, we know was A. So, like, she already, in a way, is integrated into the group because mm-hmm. she has set of all their car keys. She knows all of their coffee orders. Orders. Like she knows everything about them and it's definitely like off putting and weird for them, but it's almost like she's been there the entire time. Those scenes early on in the season, they're enjoyable for me. And I think it's cool that Mona does that for Hannah and her mom. She a real one for that because she does owe her for all the shit she's put mm-hmm. her through. Yeah. Seriously also, though. The Mona tell all at the beginning, like the very beginning of this season, needed, necessary, thank you. But yeah. also there's still so many unanswered questions and I still feel confused. What are, do you have any like big ones that you're still wondering? I just don't understand at what point did Mona start working for someone else? When she went to Radley. Okay. Well, and even the writers can't keep track of it. You're going to start to see that come season. Eh. Is it, yeah, like the last half of this season and heading into season five is when even the writers are not keeping track of anything that is Mm. going on at all. I mean, seeds have already been planted. Actually, already, they can't keep track of shit because Wilden writing off on the police report of Toby's mother, he can't be that old. Like, his age makes zero sense in that because Toby's mom killed herself years ago and Wilden was like supposedly what, only like around Cece's age? Right, yeah. That makes no sense. So, already, there's starting to lose it a little bit yeah we've talked about before how their days work and how the girls like just have all this free time but when i'm wondering so when she goes to the studio and then jake is like yeah can you be here tomorrow at 11 and she's like sure it's a school day like everyone else is at school and she's just off doing karate in the middle of the day those sessions are so intimate i would not be able to be letting a stranger like touch me and position me like that i guess like when you go to the doctor but i don't know i was like this is crazy and then she kisses him. Yeah. Because you know what it's like when somebody kisses you without your consent that literally just happened to you and then you're going to do it to him at his place of work. Mm-hmm. He ended yeah. up liking it and now they're in a relationship or whatever. But still, you Would go. you let the creepy dude make a mask of your face if we showed up and he wanted one? I think I would. I think I would be like down because we need the info. Um, I wouldn't love it. I'd probably... I don't know what triggers my panic attacks yet. <laughs> so, um, mm-hmm. like, I haven't been able to pinpoint that. So, it might trigger one, and that would suck because there's not yeah. many breathing opportunities in that mask, but I think I'd do it for the girlies and for our yeah. intel. I would do it if we needed it for the intel, but if it was something that I thought I could get out of, hell no. That mm-hmm. would make me very uncomfy having to sit there with that over my face. I feel like it would kind of be ASMR to get the plaster like put on my face. I feel like it would kind of be a little bit nice. So. It would be the breathing for me. That would be what would freak me out the most. Yeah. Have you noticed that all the lesbians in the show right now are swimmers? Wow. I actually in the water. know. I know. <laughs> I know a lot of lesbian swimmers. Actually, really? I know a lot of lesbian swimmers. Lilas. There must be something in the water. It's the chlorine. Yeah. They're making the kids gay. Trudge. Trudge um. in the badge. <laughs> Um, Spencer says the senior year is supposed to be the best year of your life. Would you consider senior year your best year of your life? <laughs> <laughs> Um, no. (laughs) Hi. How are you? I was saying hi to Aria. Look at her. She just came in here. I would not. I mean, it was fun. Like, it was a good ass time. And I was hot as fuck. (laughs) But, um, no. It was not the, I wouldn't say it's the best year of my life. I think up until that point in my 18 years, that was probably the best year. Yeah. So I think that's why people say that. Like senior year of high school has the opportunity to be like the best year of the ones you've already lived, but it will not be mm-hmm. the best. Yeah. If you're listening and you're in high school right now and it sucks, that's okay. You might be gay and not even know it like I was. You never know. So we have the new cops showing up, which Officer 
Holbrook. Not him saying to a fellow cop when she comments on like, if I left the house dressed like that when I was in high school, like my mom would have killed me. And him saying to her, I could have gotten used to it while he's like leering at the them. Uh, yeah, <sighs> I forgot about that and I didn't make a note about it, but yeah. God, the audacity. That shit's wild and on brand. And then, I mean, he ends up getting with Hannah for a hot second. So, I mean, all these cops suck. Also, with Pam getting suspended at work, too. Again, flop era. I mean, that one is kind of on Emily. But also, I'm just thinking about, dude, the the police station doesn't have a camera in there. Like, they don't have any cameras pointed at all the desks. It's a police station. Yeah. They don't have a camera that they could see that Emily took the key. Someone's flopping. Someone's getting fired. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. And I guess it's yeah. gotta be Pam, which is probably justified. Cause she's fucking <laughs> botched. You know what? She fits in there. Um those are her people. Yeah. <laughs> we have another event, the roundup event. The ho What the fuck is this shit? Oh, they just they do it every year. Huh? And why did we not see this last year? Why do you guys go to this shit? <laughs> Can you imagine what the school budget must be like? Because if Ezra's there chaperoning, then it must be like a school mandated event. Mm -hmm. So then where's all this money coming from? I mean, these Rosewood folks are loaded. Somebody better be spiking that punch because that shit looked dry as hell. I Mm -hmm. hate, can I tell you, I hate country bars for the very Mm. reason that it is the most exclusive experience when everybody starts square dancing and you don't know the fucking dance. I can't tell Mm. you how many times I've gotten stepped on in somebody's pointy ass cowboy boot because I'm trying to evacuate the floor while Mm. these heifers are stomping (laughs) to country girl shake it for me. (laughs) And that is why I will never return to the Midwest. Or the South, unless it's for a bachelor rep party this weekend. <laughs> <sighs> Not you calling them heifers. <laughs> Botch. Right. That buffet, though, did look kind of good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to need a little bit of alky. Just a little mm-hmm. splash. Someone's sneaking it. Hannah, where's your flask? Who do you think had... The best look at that event, though. Okay, it was 12 out of 10, not Spencer. Spencer, I love you, but that was botched. Oh, I actually did kind of like Emily's because it was, like, masculine, but it kind of worked. Hold on. Let me... I did like Aria's because I liked the skirt and her little shirt, and she looked the best in the cowboy hat. But yeah, then I'd probably say... Honestly, I liked Emily's. I like the cutoff shorts, the cutoff flannel. She looks good. Um, Spencer would be last, unfortunately. And Hannah looked cute. I'd say the three them looked cute just I did not like Spencer's shirt with mm-hmm. the like overalls and I didn't feel it like she just doesn't suit that look you know mm-hmm. it's not her style what about you well I know Toby isn't one of the girlies but he's giving Brokeback Mountain realness in his little oh, yeah. coat he's serving. and cowboy hat so I thought he really brought it to this event yeah Caleb too with the giddy up little doggy or whatever he said yeah I cringe but I also live yes Toby like look at him he's serving Get it. um yeah. but yeah of the girlies I would have to agree with you I think Emily her look was the cutest little cow cowgirl mix of masculine and feminine I do remember feeling some type of way when I saw Paige and Emily dancing way back in the day mm. to um I haven't seen you in ages. I remember being like, I don't, I don't like this because it's Paige, but I also kind of like this. But Paige should not have been in the back leading because I know for a fact that bitch is a fucking bottom. (laughs) Yeah. You can barely see her behind Emily and her hair and her tits and her ass. (laughs) She is serving everything. Yeah. Doing her little dance. Mm -hmm. Paige just in the back. No, it should be flopped. Mm -hmm. should be flip flopped. Can I tell you the one time though the page kind of had me in her corner this season? When? Um, it was the French club moment. The cut the crap, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. kind of like you know, Paige. I like that because Jackie was being a little bitch. Yes, <laughs> trying to make them speak. And here I am, Jacqueline. Mm-hmm. You're in high school French club. There's enough kids for that Stop. to be a club. Are you serious? <laughs> High school is so funny. It's so, like, all this shit for what? Yeah. Why am I literally (laughs) at this pep rally? (laughs) Oh, my God. 
my god. Yeah. <laughs> what was the random ad placement for Insidious 2? Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> but good ass movie. Yeah, very random, but pop off. I do want to say, we've talked about before that some of the parent storylines are just like annoying to us because they detract from what is actually important. This, I think, is actually one of my favorite parent storylines that we get. I actually really kind of fuck with this of her being framed for Wilden's murder. Yeah. And even though it's resolved like fairly quickly it doesn't feel just like filler you know it's kind of like exciting the stakes are high multiple characters are involved yeah like Spencer's mom being her lawyer and stuff yeah and it's like good you know and it's been this thing since the beginning like this kind of rivalry between the two of these characters and now one of them is dead and like she's looking kind of guilty and then Hannah trying to like protect her mom and then just seeing like that A will go after the parents because like it's bad enough for them to go after you but then to go after the ones that you love the most like that's hard to watch so I don't know I kind of fuck with the storyline yeah I love it I think it's really strong um I think Ashley Benson uh brought it a lot for her character um and it's memorable too like I definitely remembered all the shit that went down with Ashley Warren and Wilden um and it's been something that's been brewing since the beginning of the show so I feel like Mm -hmm. like that's not common in this show where like things like that are all the way drawn out so I feel like it's a nice way to wrap up that tense relationship between them Mm -hmm. Even if she was only in jail for probably, like, three days with how the timeline moves, it feels for a while. It feels longer. (laughs) Do I? Oh, okay. Another alpha question. The last event that they go to this season, this half of the season, Mm -hmm. the Ravenswood party. Who did it for you? Okay, I ranked them because, of course. So, in last place, I have Aria. I don't like the hot pink in the black, and I really hate the top hat. That is bringing down the whole fit for me. In third place, I have Hannah. I actually really like her. I like all of the top three a lot. Arya's is kind of the only one that I really don't like. Um, Hannah's is cute. It fits her well, and boobs are out. Love that for her. Mm-hmm. Spencer is my number two. I love Spencer's look. It's very like traditional, very good for her character, fits her character, and also she just looks amazing in it. But my number one is Emily. She pulled it out for me. I love the blue on her. I love the pinstriping. I love the choker necklace with like the cutout for like the little bit of cleavage. I actually like her hat. Like I think it complements her outfit nicely. I just overall thought that she looked amazed. Finally, she finally, Shay Mitchell is so fucking beautiful. And she, she deserved this look. She did. That's all I gotta say. She ate. Yeah. Hannah was last for me. I love her mm. boobies, but uh, I just felt like her weird little bonnet <laughs> wasn't yeah, was working. A, yeah. And the dress just like didn't do it for me. The other two are kind of like tied for the middle. I love that episode. I love. We talked about this over Snapchat off the pod, but no one's ever wearing tennis shoes. If no. I am every other day having to run for my life, running through the woods, running after somebody in a black hoodie, I'm wearing tennis shoes. I'm already wearing tennis shoes. Wearing like, athleisure. Majority, yes. Everyone in this town would be screwed without Veronica. Because she's always getting the girls out of things. She's getting Miss Marin off the hook. She's helping Ezra with her parent- with his parental rights. She is quite literally holding everyone together with legal advice here. And without her, they would all be flailing. Thank you, Veronica. What would you do in Travis's situation? <laughs> I might be keeping my mouth shut. I don't know. If my parent had a bad past with him too, like he says about his dad, like I wouldn't want my family to get messed up in it. So I might, Mm -hmm. but I don't know. It's like a criminal investigation. I think I would have to come forward if I was like, Mm -hmm. I witnessed that, you know, it's the right thing to do. I think I would go back and forth about it, but I would just be like, I got to tell the truth and I hope my, you know, parents aren't implicated. No, but if you've seen how like they framed her so easily, I'd be like, they could easily turn that on mine. So as bad as it sounds, I think I would probably like also be like keep my mouth shut but then I'd be so paranoid of them somehow finding out that I knew things and then I'd get in trouble but like he didn't even have any his family didn't even have any consequences so like you were worried for what Mm -hmm. you got her sent to well he didn't get her sent to jail but like she went to jail for what then (laughs) okay so we officially get confirmed that CC is in fact red coat she's a little sus Ren is also suspect as well um working with we don't really know how he's involved but he is um but the scene that really got me with CC is when she fell from that like saw mill railing or whatever and onto the floor that only makes the it so leg. 
<laughs> yeah. That, and then it only makes it so much worse that at the end of this season, when Shauna dies from falling like six feet off of a stage, and like this bitch fell stories and she yeah. was fine. Ran away. The Ezra reveal. Do you remember I, that moment? I threw my shoe. I threw yeah. my shoe. Yeah, you threw it at a wall. I was mad. He was my guy back yeah. in the day. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why. I think after they saw the effect that the Toby reveal, you cannot tell me that they were planning this shit for longer than this season. Because right. I think after they saw how big of a reaction they got with Toby, they were like, well, we got to do that again. And then mm. Caleb was getting his own spinoff show. So they're like, well, we can't do Caleb. No one cares about Paige. <laughs> So like it People can't be Toby again. That bitch. They were yeah. already hating that bitch. So like who's left? Let's make him a for a hot like, second. Where's the originality? Make it, it be on Aria. A- Ari- that's the yeah. one. That's my biggest takeaway from this half of season four is they biffed this shit so hard. If Aria would have been the last A reveal, it would have been so good. They're already setting up things like living a double life. And I think it would be so cool for Arya to have the Arya that's with them and then A. And she, like, Mm -hmm. literally has a, like, dual personality and, like, is able to separate the two. And to the point where she's able to, like, fuck shit up for her own personal life because Mm -hmm. she, like, is two separate people. Yeah. I think that would be such a good ass reveal. I don't know why they didn't do that. But it seems like they were thinking about it and chickened out. I think they were. I I thought there are so many theories online that they were. And like so many signs pointing to that. And then when they just decided not to go that route. Because I do think that at the end they're like, oh, we don't want to mess up this friendship. Which like we talk about how much we love. But I would have loved even more to have had her BA. And it's it's valid. Like they didn't want to fuck up the friendship. They still could have preserved it though in some way I think there was a way to do it it would have just been like it would have had to be like well written and I don't think Mm -hmm. they were like up for the challenge no offense I don't think so either. I do love in the theme song of the 13th episode that we see the eye being opened instead of closed and the mm-hmm. casket opening instead of being closed. Love that. I mm-hmm. thought that was just a fun detail. Mm-hmm. And if I, we already talked about it, I hate all of the Miranda stuff in that it's such a waste of time. But especially if I was Hannah and I had this random girl crying to me about her uncle while my undead best friend is in this mansion being chased by someone who's trying to hurt her and trying to hurt me and my friends and I've lost them that I've been harassed by for three years I would be knocking this bitch upside the head like I'm not (laughs) trying to say that my trauma is more than yours but my trauma is more than yours (laughs) get out of my way (laughs) I wouldn't have time for that yeah so valid just one other thing about Ezra that whole situation when they find that lair and they're like oh my god A has like access to all of our homes home security systems and like to the police and everything it's like yeah no shit how the fuck else do you think they've been doing all of this and then for all that for the explanation to be he was writing a book so why right, does he need like, access to their security you're breaking and entering you can just tell that they did not think this or they just thought that everyone would kind of suspend their disbelief which is fine but i still feel like you should have a level of realism to it i just i just think it's like one of the first really bad decisions that they made the mm-hmm. toby decision was really good and risky mm-hmm. and ballsy and it worked yeah they just chicken out of everything like toby relatively speaking like isn't a for long i don't know he was never like really a i don't know and then lastly i would just like to remind everyone of the timeline of this show yes, because please enlighten us all because i'm thank lost. you seasons one and two take place their junior year of high school seasons three through six and a half take place their senior year of high school so far in the first two months because this isn't e- we don't even know for sure that this is halloween it's just like this was the halloween episode and it's like turning to be fall so we can presume and there's a christmas episode in the last half of season no it's in season five that there's a christmas episode oh my God. so i'm just assuming that this is all taking place within september and october so here is everything that has happened so far or kind of just like a brief overview this is not everything everything but uh in only two months we basically discovered that ezra had 
as a child and him and Aria break up. He comes back to Rosewood to teach to support said child. Emily is back with Paige, even though we think she's A for a hot second. Emily then injures her arm and can't swim anymore and then is abused by Paige. (laughs) <laughs> Caleb is shot and recovers from said gunshot wound after Paige and Emily are kidnapped by Maya's stalker. Mona is out of Radley, then suddenly friends with the girls again after beefing with Spencer again and having Toby be on the A-team with her. Toby is A, Spencer goes crazy, then is also on the A-team, then they're both off of the A-team. Garrett is killed. Meredith drugs Arya, then dips out. They see (laughs) Allie multiple times. Weldon is killed, and Ashley is framed for murder, then cleared for his murder. A car crashes into Emily's house. Aria dates her karate instructor. Mona confesses to killing Wilden, is back in Radley, and then is out of Radley. Jenna could see again, but then she's blind again. (laughs) (laughs) Almost killed. Ezra turns out to not be the father, and Ezra is also A, and Allie is alive. That's two months of the year. The fact that when you think about it, Toby and Ezra are A within two months of each other, and also that Caleb was shot and killed, not almost killed, and then he's going to Ravenswood, like what, a month later? How quickly do gunshot wounds heal? Not that. Not that. (laughs) So I'm just going to start keeping a running timeline of everything that happens over their senior year of high school. Because this is only, they have, they probably haven't even barely taken midterms yet. And that's Was nobody that's on the set like, wait, it's Halloween? Or like when they got, to, when they got to the like Christmas episode, I'm sure people were like, wait, it's Christmas of their senior year. I don't know. That yeah. shit's fucking wild. If all of that was happening to me in September and October of my senior year, I went through a breakup during September and October of my senior year and I almost didn't make it out. Yeah. Imagine if I <laughs> if my boyfriend was A and then my mm-hmm. mom went to jail. My boyfriend yeah. got shot, my mom went to jail because that all happens to the same person. Yeah. Your dad Within gets two months of married, each other. you ruin that marriage. Like, all of this shit. Or even just think, like, if you just want to focus on, like, one character specifically thinking about Spencer, that she finds out that her boy, she loses her virginity, finds out that her boyfriend is A, then thinks he's dead, goes to Radley for a hot second, comes out, is on the A-team for a little bit, is off the A-team, and then this season, she doesn't really have much outside of Toby, but then when you think that she has her drug addiction problem that's going to come at the end of next, at the later half of this season, that's just, uh, and, then she's gonna, and then she's going to get kidnapped and go to college, all in one year. <laughs> I love it. It's amazing television, honestly. Television at its worst and best. They don't make shit like this anymore. Anyways. Fucking Anyways. We love you all. And next time, we don't know what we'll be doing. But it will be great. But we'll figure it out. So. Thank you so much for listening. Yeah. Lilas. Lilas. Yeah, 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 yeah.